But when we get to Romans 8, 1, he says, There is there, therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. No condemnation. Same thing we've been saying. We've been transferred, as I said a while ago, from one position to another position. But it doesn't end there. Because the rest of Romans is about sanctification. The process of living out our faith, growing in maturity towards the likeness of Jesus Christ. That's where most of us in this place are today. Very important. Look at Romans 8.4. So that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. There's where the battle is drawn. We're walking and living out our faith with God working in us to will and to do of His good pleasure. Look at verse 12 and 13. So then, brethren, we are under obligation. We have been saved. We're under obligation not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you're living according to the flesh, you must die. But if by the Spirit you're putting to death the deeds of the body, you will live. He is a new creature in Christ and the battle is there. Doesn't mean it's easy, but God has equipped us. Look down at verse 23. And not only this, but also we ourselves having the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves. It's a groaning thing to be living in a world saturated in darkness and sin, continuously coming in and at us from every direction and tempting us and drawing us away from the things of God. And we groan within ourselves. It's a battle going on. But notice verse 27. He who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We have the Holy Spirit working within us as an interceder. And if that wasn't enough, we are told in verse 28, you're very familiar with, that he works all things together for good to them that love him and are and are called according to His purpose. And that even includes, brother, the sin that still remains in our life. He even uses that. We intended it for evil, but He intended it for good. And then, if that's not enough, Christ also is our interceder. Down in verse 34, who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is He who died for us, rather who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. Christ is our interceder at the right hand of God the Father. And so you know the rest of what Romans 8 says, that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. But we are clearly in a battle. 